very interesting. A real problem. And when they went forward, we the people went forward uh, against the federal bureaucrats' army. And when we did that, and when I say we, I want to tell you, it's not me, it was them that went forward. And they went forward not knowing the militia was going to back them up. This was something that I didn't even realize for a couple of weeks after they didn't start having time to see the videos. Those people went forward and they had very few arms. They wasn't armed. There was only maybe a half a dozen out of several hundred that had a, a sidearm or something on them. They went forward to defend our liberty and freedom. And they was go wasn't going to let the, the feds have their way. And they marched forward with the guns pointing at them. And let me express this a little bit. Was anybody there that's here? Was anybody there? It's sort of uh, interesting. I, I, I go around and talk, uh, and you know, usually there's one or two that was there. <laughs> so anyway, and I always feel like they need to be the witness. I, I shouldn't be telling this story. They should tell it. It's their story. But let me tell you, they were going uh, t towards these guns. And these, the, the feds were saying, halt, we have a court order, we'll fire. If you move forward, we'll fire. That's, this was the language over their bullhorn. This is what they're telling the people. And the people kept them moving forward. And the people told me they did not have fear. Now, you know, you and I, it's sort of hard to understand. How can these people go without fear? It wasn't that they wasn't thinking about it, but they was going without telling you about one little, uh, little guy. This little guy was a Russian. And I'd known him for a few years. He worked for my neighbor a few years ago. <clears throat> and anyway, he came to stand with Bundy. And when they was at, under that bridge marching forward towards these guns, he took the American flag and headed out and headed march right in front of everybody. And uh, my sons and other people, they kept a holler and come back. And finally, they run and stopped him. And he said, remember, he's a little Russian guy. He said, I lived under this kind of a government, and I'll be damned if I'm going to be in America and live under this kind of government. And he was going to be the first man killed. You know, what can you say? You, all, you just gain a lot of respect for that man. You start understanding where he come from, and you start understanding a little bit, well, we better be paying attention here. We better be fighting. We better be willing to stand and take that flag forward. I know you're here to learn about grand juries. And let me tell you, I don't know much about grand juries. I do know about we the people standing. And I have seen, let me just tell you a little, another little example of we the people standing. My son Ammon lives in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, you might have read this on the internet on the, uh, you know, as he started, to, he joined the, or tried to get airplane ticket, just like we did this morning. Well, he did that several times. And you know what he did? He challenges that. Every time they give him trouble, he puts that on the internet. And you know how many hits he'll get when he talks about uh, the federal government retaining him and causing him trouble like they did Buddha and I this morning? You know, he'll get up to a half a million hits on the social media. In, in, in less than 12 hours, 24 hours, he'll get a half a million. You know, we the people are paying attention to these problems. And you don't think a half a million people makes a difference? That's, that's how we the people, that's one of the way, that's, that's what brought the people to Bundy Ranch is the social media. But it was we the people that come. It wasn't Bundy fighting the federal government. Now it was we the people fighting the federal government. And guess what? The militia backed them up. Now let me tell you the story there. The, we the people and the horses and the men on foot and the women on feet, but going towards the, this army. I looked a little bit later in the videos and here's militia in per perfect position up, time, up on that top of that freeway with a cement barrier rail along there pointing their gun through the cracks. Now those people, if the feds would have fired on we the people, that militia would have saved a lot of lives. And it might be the reason that the army or the federal army backed off. Because they could see that militia was there. 
Now let me talk to you a little bit about Malaysia. Before the standoff, I, I never understood Malaysia very much. It's a little bit like I don't quite understand grand jury. But let me tell you, it was very clear that, that we the people had the right to do what we're doing. But it was very clear that the strength comes from our Second Amendment rights. The militia was there to back up we the people. That's something that needed to be done, and that's something that happened in, at Bundy Ranch. I don't know whether it ever's happened in, before in, for hundreds of years, but it did happen at Bundy Ranch. And let me talk to you a little bit about what's going on at Bundy Ranch now. In eight months, I have never seen a government licensed vehicle on my ranch, or even in that part of the county. I mean, talk about relief. Remember, it was just a few months ago I had guns pointed at me. But now I haven't had one, uh, I haven't had a BLM, a Forest Service, Park Service, Fish and Wildlife, Federal, uh, nobody. And I haven't got no letter from the court. And I haven't got no letter from the sheriff. Uh, they, they have left me alone. Now, of course, you know, there are always kind of rumors that they're going to come and get me. They're going to do this and that. But you know what I tell them? When you got guts enough to do it, just come on. Because, you know, I had thousands of people there helping me, and now I know that I'll have ten thousands of people helping me next time. I want to talk, take just a little, one more minute here. When we the people was standing underneath them flags, and the, my county sheriff was there. We met with the county sheriff. I wouldn't talk to the county sheriff until he met in front of we the people. And there was a mandate, mandate made to the sheriff. The mandate was take those arms away from those, those feds. Take those arms away from those federal agents. And you know, a, a couple of days went by, and he didn't take them away. If he would have took them away, we wouldn't have to face them. They, those guns wouldn't have been poking down our throat. But the, but the sheriff didn't do what we, the people, asked him. But let me tell you something. A few days later, I think two days later, I had this thought. The thought was sort of scary. My thought was, the good Lord has given America one more chance. There's 3,100 3, county uh, sheriffs in America. If they would all take care of their county and take those arms away in each county, uh, those arms would be taken away from the bureaucracy. I'm not talking about taking people's Second Amendment rights away. I'm take, talking about taking those government agency guns that they've, what's the word, issued. Government issued arms away from those bureaucrats. When does a bureaucrat need a gun? Why, what, why do they have all of these, you know, you hear all about all of these uh, ammo they're buying. That ammo's not to shoot foreign uh, enemy. They're to shoot we the people. And why do they need that arms? And why do they need that guns? You know, who's supposed to protect our life, liberty, and property? Who is supposed to protect our life, liberty, and property? Who do we hire? Who do we elect? And who do we hire? Our county sheriff's job. The only, he's the only man we hire and the only man we pay to protect our life, liberty, and property. Of course, he has a force, but we hire him. We elect him. And... And we don't have, the feds don't have no jurisdiction and authority here. So what I'm telling you, America, we better wake up and we better take those guns away from those bureaucrats or we're going to have to face them in a civil war. Thank you, and if we get time, I'd like to ask it or answer any kind of question or anything. Do we have a question? Anybody got a question? Now's the time. This gentleman right here. said several months ago that an article appeared in the Federal Register declaring all the land, about two million acres around your property, as a national wilderness. If that wasn't enacted by Congress uh, by February 10th, it would stand by default. What's your position on that? What have you done about it? Well, I am, I am a I, I'm, I understand it was an ACEC, which means a, a area of critical environmental concern. And they brought that ACEC over uh, about three counties, southern Nevada, which my ranch would have been in part of it. But let me tell you, they're putting another layer. Another. Let me talk to you just a little bit. But about before then, they had ACECs in areas, and they had what they call what they was doing here, is they was saying 
we'll give you access to the land. We'll give you like a byway. And you stay on the sidewalk and don't get off on the grass. And if you get off on the grass, we'll give you a four or $500 ticket. Well, the ACEC basically said, we're going to take the sidewalk away. So now you get on, you go anywhere, you're going to be on our land with this critical environmental uh, uh, concern. And now you're going to get a ticket for stopping along the road or picnicking or hunting or doing anything. So in other words, it was another layer. But let me tell you what Bundy thinks. I've been dealing with these things all my life. As far as I'm concerned, it don't have no meaning to me. Well, that was no doubt the renowned cowboy Cleveland Bundy, who's got a 40-year anniversary event coming up April 12th, 13th, 14th, around that time, one year after he and the militia stood down the federal SWAT team of the BLM, made them go away. 